Welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm JJ, your host, and today we're directly talking with Sylvanus from Namibia. Hello. Hi, JJ. How are you doing, man? I'm great. I'm great. I'm yeah. happy to have you on board here today. It's a really yeah. great. Um, we are in contact um, since uh, a while now, and um, we. Uh, you're a student in architecture, right? Yeah, I'm an architecture student in Namibia. In Namibia, exactly. Yes. And um, you started um, studying like uh, four years ago, architecture. Yeah, that's exactly true. Um, I did my for uh, my first six semesters here in Namibia, and last year I went over to Germany for an exchange uh, semester, which was like my final for my bachelor thesis. So and and that's that, pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> um, yeah. I spent like about seven months in Germany last year with two other colleagues of mine. Um, over there, mm -hmm. we did, you know, we took upon various courses and, and it's I was a technical German school, right? Yeah, it is. It is um, sim quite similar to the one I'm doing here in Namibia. It's also a technical school. Um, you know, we are quite focused on hands on work, very practical. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, basically there you discovered bamboo or, or you, you already knew about bamboo and what's the situation there? Uh, yeah. So JJ, uh, in Namibia, where I am, we have, we don't have bamboo at all. Right. Um, and I always no knew about bamboo, but I never really dove into it to like figure out, uh, what could uh, be used with it until I went to Germany where I took on one of the courses with uh, Professor Sasha Lupot. And we, they, they were already in a, in a later stage of a project where they were building with bamboo and I helped with the construction and, you know, we're figuring out things like construction details. And that's where I sort of fell in love with the topic of bamboo and, you know, using it in architecture. And from there on, I, I, it sparked a lot of interest in me. And yeah, and and the know. latest the latest um, thing there was this um, seminar bamboo seminar in Mozambique, right? Yes, where you just um, like attended a few days ago, like a week and a half or something like that. Maybe you can uh, uh, give some impressions there. That was also with um, I think the, the professor Sasha Lupold was not able to join, but you were yeah, like a big group there and yeah. 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 So professor, he sent me an invite for the seminar uh, that was being hosted in Mozambique, um, where different alumni from different African countries had to gather together. And the main goal was, um, to start up a, a school, right. To educate people in Africa, uh, specifically Mozambique in this context, uh, about bamboo and construction moving on. So that's the main goal. And for that, you went to three different locations in Mozambique. And, yeah, we, um, yeah, we visited um, Maputo. That's where we landed first. Uh, we had a couple of seminars at the architecture university there. You know, we joined some by some of the um, local students there as well. Um, and, and then they later already on, have bamboo there. Yes, they, they have something... bamboo. They have bamboo growing in the country. Um, and, but the issue is that, you know, bamboo is recognized as a poor man's building material. So yeah. people don't really incorporate it in their, in their construction. Uh, and it's, it's simple things like growing techniques that they don't know and harvesting it to, you know, use it for construction. Um, yeah, from Maputo, we had another seminar in Inyaka. It's an island off the coast of Maputo. Um, yeah, we had a couple of seminars on things like water management, uh, you know, just upgrading the area and what bamboo could benefit, um, the land. Um, yeah. and, and how many, so these were all exchange students from that university or, or technical school in Germany, right? Or like yeah. a mix um, of various, um... we, 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 we had a, a mixture of, um, the, 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 the alumni were like most of mostly Africans who did an exchange program in Germany. Most of them already have their PhDs, some are professors at their home countries. Um, so 
I was probably one of the very youngest out of the alumni. And then we had the other group that I worked with in Germany last year with Professor Sasha Lu, but those were, yeah, the German students. Okay, but this is super cool because it's exactly um, kind of the, the, the individual, the person I was looking for, you know, this yeah. bamboo, Think Bamboo series is about the next generation. And basically yeah. you're 23 years old, so you yeah, are the next generation of bamboo uh, builders yeah. and bamboo architects. So mm -hmm. um, this is perfect. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm sure the, the seminar, um, what, what you're sharing with me sounds highly um, um, interesting. Even more, it was a very short time and it seems like you did a lot of uh, really interesting stuff. Yeah, it was about 10 days. Um, the schedule was quite tight, you know, because you um, we had to learn you know, from the Mozambican context, you know, what we needed to uh, incorporate in our concept of a curriculum, because our goal is to get a school there, right? Um, but then we also need to know what do the people of Mozambique want? What do they need? What's lacking from them? So that's why we so did, the ex that's why we did, you know, the trips from Maputo, Inyaka, and to Ponto de Euro to see what's happening around. And do you already have like kind of this uh, intel? What is it like the what the people need there? Um, in in three words, maybe. What can you share from your learnings there? Um, three words. Um, three words. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge on bamboo. Um, you know, and that's what the school wants to provide. You know, those are the future goals. Awesome. Uh, yeah, awesome. bamboo cultivation. I mean, once there is knowledge, people can uh, use that knowledge and, and, and use all this uh, fantastic bamboo for uh, future mm -hmm. projects. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, okay, this, I, it, it, yeah. Yeah, no, no, After please you. go on. All right. Um, I was going to say, there's like a huge potential, you know, in terms of bamboo in, in, in uh, Mozambique, because the locals, they are quite hands-on people, right? You you find, you know, when you're walking around, there's these handmade crafts out of different um, um, different plants, like the, the, the rattan or so. And, you know, the yep. issue is that the, the more we keep using other species, plant species, they might get depleted and it causes deforestation, um, which was one of the issues we were focusing on while we were in uh, Mozambique. And teaching them about bamboo helps them, you know, open their eyes to this building material that can be used for the crafts that they are making as well. Uh, the guys are really, they're, they're quite creative, if I must say. Cool. I, I hope you can yeah. share some photos maybe later. We can, like, include into the uh, blog article of this podcast yeah. where I, I I'll do a summary. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Cool. That would be great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, wow. It really sounds, we uh, initially tried to do the podcast while you were in Mozambique, but it was impossible due to like bad internet and, and very yeah. little time and all that. Yeah, so I'm it was quite a heavy schedule. We're... Yeah, I, 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 I saw that. But um, hey, I'm great we're able to do it now and you're able yeah. to share some insights here. Uh, anybody mm -hmm. who uh, might be interested now um, will be uh, for sure um, listening. And, and learning what um, you guys have been uh, like also learning and exchanging and, and doing there in, in Mozambique. Um, yeah. And um, yeah. Also, you, you mentioned before you were in, in Germany for over a half a year as exchange student, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was, um, and, I was um, mm -hmm. and And how was your... Like, what was one of the biggest, uh, maybe, surprises or from your expectations, like, first time in, in, in maybe in Europe or, or Germany regarding, yeah. uh, like, bamboo or, or, or things like that? Um, you know, in, in Germany, I was there, you know, everyone preaches sustainability and uh, being green everywhere. So, to me... It, it, it's something I've always heard about, but I've never seen it being put into action. You know, there are so many recycling <laughs> systems. I had, to, yeah, I had to, like, get into that as well, um, which it could benefit 
um, us as Africans as well, you know, and create a climate friendly world together, you know, if we learn from one another. So they are quite serious about, you know, the, the world and, you know, the, this whole climate change thing, which is amazing. We need that. We need more people that think that direction and it will help us. And bamboo would be one of the steps, just one of the many steps that we take into having a, you know, a climate friendly um, system all over. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that it probably changed a little bit your, your perception regarding um, what you read before. And then you saw those people like really trying to achieve more uh, yeah. sustainable or, or the recycling of bottle glass and yeah. stuff like that, um, <laughs> which uh, is for sure different. Or even I think the plastic bags, I don't know if they're pro prohibited in Germany or something like that, but probably. The, I mean, they the are there. They're for sale. Um, it's quite expensive, I, I should pay. say. Yeah, you have to pay for it. Yeah, you have to pay. Uh, so yeah. this system of going with your own shopping bag has been enforced. It's something we practice in Namibia as well. I think it's quite recent, cool. actually. But wow, I I, I love how in the, every supermarket you have these you know machines where you just throw in your plastic bottle and you sort of you, you get paid back. Um, like 20, 25 cents in euros and it's something you did pay for, but it's a, it's a way of, you know, forcing you to recycle these things, which creates a, a, a clean environment. You know, you positive. don't have trash uh, laying all over, which is good. Yeah. Positive. Yeah. And also what about, um, last time I was in Germany, um, at the bamboo expo, um, mm -hmm. we had some, uh, uh, like one time use, um, bamboo, um, what was it, uh, dishes, you know, for eating. And, yeah. uh, yeah. I was like really amazed because I've never like touched it before. I was like, yeah. wow, this is, this is from bamboo grass and I'm eating on it. And it, it, it looks really, um, and I think there are like dishes, like, 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 and, and also glasses and stuff like that. Um, so, um, but it's, of course, it's the industry, right? Yeah. Things are mm -hmm. available there and, um, probably all of that, neither in Namibia or Mozambique, um, all good. Um, okay. So, um, what, um, can you tell me about, um, the future regarding bamboo and how you as, as young bamboo student or bamboo or, or architect um, see the future with architecture and, and bamboo within your environment, which right now is uh, Namibia, yeah. mostly. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, there's quite a, a number of initiatives, you know, that lead to like sustainable ways of doing construction, um, less, lessen the carbon footprint. Um, the office where I'm working for is also taking an initiative in another project. Um, and I think if we perhaps try to, you know, link up with other, uh, places that are using bamboo to learn from them as well, um, we could have a growing industry in terms of bamboo and construction, you know, uh, have greener buildings. Um, start up plantations here or open up a market with other places where bamboo grows uh, effortlessly, you know. And I personally, I hope, I, I, I'm, I'm going to include bamboo in my research at some point because um, it's something I fell in love with when I was in Germany, right? Um, and yeah, just expand my knowledge further on it and see how far as a country we can take it. Um, yeah. Regarding bamboo, yeah, because Regarding you mentioned bamboo, before um, that in, uh, in Namibia you do have like uh, forests wood, uh, but it's more of a high price segment uh, material. So, yeah, I um, mean the the types of trees and and wood we have here is like the the Zambezi teak, you know, things like rosewood, uh, which is like high end rosewood. quality. Oh. It it, it uh, grows up. Uh, um, yeah, it's luxury wood. You know, you have these big dinner tables, you know, that they make and they're quite expensive, but you can't really use them for construction, right? Uh, because they have that niche. And yeah. at some point the trees are going to run out and deforestation issues will uprise. 
So if we perhaps introduce bamboo um, in here as well, you know, we we might just work. We might just work well. Absolutely. Only the 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 one of the challenges you mentioned also before was the topic water, right? You're in a mostly a, a drier um, semi-arid uh, climate. Dry. Yeah. Semi-arid, and mm -hmm. of course um, that needs. Uh, a little bit different management than if you would be like in a, in a tropical or semi-tropical uh, climate, um, but it's yeah. not impossible at all, right? Because you do have no. water. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we're not completely and, desert. We do receive exactly. quite a lot of rainfall, but the problem is we we get a lot of it in a short amount of time, and we don't really have much harvesting systems here, which would be a great uh, initiative, you know, to. You know, include them in house designs, or you know, just have them for farming and and so forth. So water harvesting is is a, a big topic. It is, it is. Yeah, and not and not so many. Basically... Sorry, sorry, go on. I was just gonna say, not so many people have you know touched on that topic yet, uh, or thought of it being beneficial to them, and and uh, and so forth course because it, it, it needs probably like a little bit more knowledge and uh, understanding of uh, natural uh, bamboo harvesting and storing because once you harvest it you want to store the water right you want to yeah. be able to to access it like during uh, yeah. the long during the dry season yes time. yeah exactly yeah yeah mm -hmm. so ideally it's, it's it's a bit of a permaculture approach where you want to slow down the the, the water speed where the water Definitely. like it rains or whatever, and the water mm -hmm. is there, and you want to keep it as long as possible on as long site, as possible. on location, until the water like continues its it, its way um, at the end in, into the groundwater or the ocean, right? Yeah. yeah. And and I think That's... there bamboo basically uh, has several uh, positive impacts. One of them is um, it will attract more rain. Um, yeah. Because of the the climate, the temperature change, uh, it, it re reduces a little bit the, the temperature. Um, it creates a little bit more moisture. Of course, yeah. it improves the soil, but also it's it it's a natural water tank, right? So this yeah. Um, yeah. this this can help um, basically for this um, water harvesting or water topic, which is not only in, in Namibia. Basically, the water topic is everywhere, or you have it's too everywhere. much water. Mm -hmm. Or you don't have enough water, right? Too, yeah, exactly. But, yeah. And like, it's and like, uh, a... It, it's a it's a big ecosystem booster, you know. Like one of the places we visited in uh, in Ponta de Ouro, um, a lot of deforestation was going on there, right? So their issue is not less water, but more water, right? Which is washing away the the soil. And we exactly. the, the, aim, the the plan is yeah the plan is to like plant like bamboo to help to help hold that soil. Because right now we just have like really small plants growing in the area, but we 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 hope we aim into into speeding up the process of protecting that area. And later, hopefully, it becomes a beautiful sight bird sightseeing um, location um, for the locals. Absolutely, if, if you're able yeah. to introduce bamboo and and help, because bamboo does help a lot to um, um, stop and to manage that this topsoil erosion. Which is also mm -hmm. something typical. If you have a lot of water in very short amount of time, of course that water is is gonna is gonna seek its way down, and it's gonna take everything on on the top with it, right? Um, Definitely. It's it's not good because you're losing all this rich topsoil, which yep. is basically um, super important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, um, And also that. That can help. Um, um, it would be interesting to see then what types of um, bamboo um, will uh, work there within that climate. Definitely, because mm. bamboo, there's like when we know there are over thousand five hundred different bamboo types, and there are like mm. the big ones, the small ones, and all that. Yeah. But um, it it varies a lot regarding the climate um, and how much water they need at the beginning once they're like semi growing once they're uh, tall they, they also it depends a little bit if they can thrive with a lots of water or with extremes right lots of water yeah. no water um, yeah. yeah 
So that's uh, interesting. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, how was um, your um, your? In, uh, probably in Germany, you didn't see a lot of uh, bamboo, like uh, no plants. Um, I didn't. Right? I, I did see, but you know, more like in someone's backyard garden and so forth. Like I was, I don't know if you know Paul, you know, but uh, he's a member of Asamba. Um, no. At his home, he's 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 growing bamboo in his backyard, and I think that's pretty much the only place I've seen it uh, in Germany. Wow. But um, the prototype we built it at, at the Hochschule Rheinland in Germany. Um, we imported it, and yeah, that's that's the that's the most I've seen, <laughs> and at the export. Another as well. question: Where did this bamboo you imported come from? Do you know that? Um, uh, I think South America, yeah. So can't probably quite, South America. Yeah, can't quite pinpoint which country exactly. Um, it was a while back. If it's if it's in the Americas, uh, probably it's South America right now because uh, it's or Colombia, or yeah. uh, maybe Peru. Most likely, Colombia mm. is really exporting lots of guadu. It was guadua bamboo, maybe you used. Sorry. Was it Guadua bamboo? Um, Guadua angustifolia, maybe? They, they use the, the mozo, I think. Okay, then it's not from there. Mozo is from Asia. No? Okay. So okay. that was, okay. um, if it's mozo, it's from Vietnam. I, I, I could have um, it messed, messed up as well. So. Okay. But that's interesting yeah. because you see, actually, Germany and um, Namibia are not so different in regards of bamboo because none of them had or have uh, endemic natural bamboo that's but, true but um but it, they do have well germany or europe has like this demand on bamboo because it's seen as something exotic something yeah. uh, cool because it's not from there of course um and um but they also have to plant it uh, france is planting and doing lots of, of testing with planting bamboo portugal too um I'm not so sure about Germany right now, um, but but it's it's funny that it's kind of similar. Like um, to Namibia, huh? even if there is no bamboo, you can plant bamboo. Of course, it'll take a time. It's five to six, seven years until yeah. you get everything stable once it's planted. But everything everything takes time, right? So um, that's uh, quite the normal approach. Yeah, <laughs> I think the plant. I think the plant is quite flexible. Um, you know, you just have to absolutely try trial and error with different species that can fit your climate. I mean, Europe can get extremely cold for the plant, but there's probably yeah. going to be one or two or three that can adapt to those conditions and they'll do well. The issue, the only absolutely. issue is example, that, yeah, the only yeah. issue might lead to where the species that survives there might not be able to be used for construction, but it can be used for other stuff. I mean, this. The, the, the shoots of bamboo can be eaten, and it, there's, exactly. it's, it's a flexible plant. Yeah. yeah. We just have to figure out what which species is the best one. And, and thinking of Mosul, for example, in China, Mosul mm -hmm. has like survives like one meter of snow, you know, in the higher parts no. of China. Oh. Mosul is yeah. like, you see some photos, there is like this huge Mosul forest, carpet. and they yeah. have like one meter of snow on top of them. And that's the winter. And in summer, nice. they have uh, sunny days and everything. Um, but it, it really depends on the bamboo species. So I think it's um, absolutely, as you said, a very adaptable plant. And also it has so many uses. Most people haven't even like um, figured out how useful this giant grass may be for them and for mm -hmm. their region and their um, ecosystem. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And Silvanus, yeah. um, can you share yes. some um, insights regarding some of the prototypes you have been able to work on or, or build or, or like uh, design uh, so far um, within um, your um, studies? Yeah. Um, so in Germany, we had uh, this pavilion, you know, it was initially for a competition, but that was then the designs were done before I arrived in Germany. Um, I would, I'll, I'll share the pictures with you um, after this. Great. Um, so it was quite, um, 
it was like a, a hyperbol a hyperbolic structure. You know, we had to experiment with different connection details. We, yeah, we curved the bamboo. When you see the pictures, you wonder how we did it. But it was quite interesting to learn that you you know there's ways to bend it. You know, and things like this sort of sparked my interest in it uh, because the possibilities are endless. Um, you you can have structures like domes or a woven building, perhaps. Um, yeah, it's it's I, I I'm mostly interested in how to connect um, stuff because I, I I as a hobby I do woodwork, you know, for construction purposes. I try to do my own furniture sometimes. Uh, awesome. So that's the part that yeah, that's a big interest in me. So. You you're, as I understand, also very much into how the, how many ways are how to connect bamboo one yeah. which is each other, or yeah. also the joints. And there are and so many forth. ways to connect bamboo, right? Yeah, and many, many. <laughs> and we had to we had to do that on on the job, you know, for that uh, structure that we presented at the 2023 um, Bamboo Expo. Uh, it was it was a great learning curve, you know. Um, and I really appreciate Pretty it. Much. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. And and have you also worked like with the like the the ancient uh, bamboo um, joint method, which is basically you do your own bamboo nails, you know? Yeah. And then you the use them to connect. How do you call them? Uh, we call them dolls. Dolls. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think this is. Like from from my point of view, I think this is like so beautiful because you need like you don't need any metal, you don't need anything. You're nope. using the same bamboo. No. Yeah, I mean it's 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 bamboo everywhere. Um, you know, we try we, we we try to minimize the use of glue, you know, nails and so forth. Um, and for, we we tried a lot of methods really on the job, um, and the dolls did quite a great job as well. They, I, I believe, they're still standing today. The structure was put up in on the on on the Hawkshaw Raiman campus. Wow! Yeah. But there were many people involved there, right? They're like a it was quite, quite a, a big a, number. A yes. big team. Yeah. I, yeah. It was like the expo in Germany, right? Last year. Yeah, twenty twenty three uh, European Bamboo Expo. Bamboo Expo. Yeah, yeah. I was there too. I think oh, okay. we somehow met each other over the edge. I was very probably. busy taking videos and podcasts there, and you were yeah. very busy probably building. I mean, <laughs> so, we were quite yeah. busy because it was quite a massive structure. Since you were there, you, you've seen it in front of the, the main entrance. Uh, it took quite a yeah, while yeah, to I put it, it up. It was like two days of work. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And yeah. that already like prepared everything and having all the cuts and everything, right? Yeah, so what happened was everything was done on campus in Wiesbaden. Um, you know, all the pieces okay. were like prepared. Yeah, no, we prepared them on campus. We did the cuts and the on measurements campus, yeah. and everything. We put it up, you know, just to make sure that this is standing. Then we disassembled it, loaded up, <laughs> loaded on trucks, and we traveled to Dortmund and we set it up again. So, yeah, <laughs> that's quite a lot of work, but it was fun. It was a great, great experience, really. Wow, that sounds yeah. really cool. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. imagine. I mean, it's a lot of detail work and a lot of planning there. Um, mm -hmm. um, even with bamboo. Um, yeah, and, and it's a funny thing that still some like um, um, places and, and people think that bamboo is a poor man's timber because they just use it very uh, like like simple, more like wood, yeah. and then sometimes it's it, it's directly um, it, it will impact the water or the sun ray, and, and of course it won't survive that long as if it's below a roof and all that stuff. So yeah, I I, I really feel like we are sleeping on bamboo. Um, it's a rich man's uh, material by the look of things. I mean. There's so many designs that I've seen and some resorts and hotels um, I've seen that uh, were made purely from bamboo and you would be amazed, trust me. You wouldn't think that it was made out of bamboo, to be honest. You're referring that some of the Asian uh, resorts and, and in Bali maybe, yeah. right? Um, I was mentioning about, you know, bamboo being, not being a poor man's building material, but material for everyone, you know. 
it's exactly. it could look high end if you if you apply like the right techniques and so forth. Absolutely. And and uh, there a bonus question: Have you tried to, or have you already built bamboo furniture or like prototypes with bamboo? My, myself, no. But in Germany, yes. We, you know, after we set up our pavilion, we had to like make benches for us to sit. They weren't the best looking benches, but you know, it's <laughs> furniture. We could sit on them. They were functional. And we use them throughout the project to reach high places when we're drilling. So I, I look forward to, you know, incorporating them myself at home, you know, in my hobbies as a woodworking material. Absolutely. Even though it's, yeah. it's giant grass, but it's, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it's maybe That's even the more, best grass more you can bendable. Get. And... Exactly. The best grass you can get. That's a good uh, a slogan. <laughs> Um, um, because also it's 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 about using the right to techniques knowledge but also having access to the right tools how to yeah. work with bamboo right because yeah. the, the classic tools you use with wood no, are not always the, the, the ideal tools to work with bamboo yeah yeah you you might have to like adapt to you know get some new drills perhaps or some cutting saws to you know to work with a bamboo bamboo or um, even sometimes you have to build JJ. your own tools because none are available um regarding um when you want to drill through like a, a big bamboo and another big bamboo you need like 60 centimeter drill drill head um yeah okay you hear me? Yeah. Okay, Silvanus, so I have one more question regarding future students. Do you okay. have any recommendation how they should like, or or what is your like, um, what what are your recommendations for future students who think, hey, um, I'd like to tap into uh, architecture and bamboo. Um, for you know wherever in the world that you are going to study for architecture, you know, I think it's a great course to take on. It's quite hands-on. Um, you learn a lot in like different sectors. So you're not just focused on one specific topic like economics, but you get to touch here and there. Um, before I started architecture, I, I wasn't really into plants, but you know, now I'm interested in knowing more about specific plants like bamboo, you know, how they grow, how they work. And it's, it's, it's not something that I would have ever imagined to be thinking of, you know, about how a specific plant grows, but because of architecture and it's, um, many, many different, um, topics, I get to like learn about different sectors, you know? So that's I, I would, that's interesting, I, interesting insight. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would, I would highly le recommend that you know, when you do take up architecture, you, that you have an open mind about things, um, because there's a lot that you're going to learn and, and it's not just about buildings and drawings, you know, it's more than that. Sounds interesting fun. for me. It's quite fun. Exactly. Yeah. Fun, interesting, and, and, and really the thing to study. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, um, thank you very much, Silvanus, for, for your time, your insights here. Uh, regarding uh, bamboo, um, I would like to also uh, remind uh, our viewers to um, uh, subscribe to Think Bamboo on YouTube or TikTok or uh, X, um, and um, we can add if you have your own. Um, I think you have uh, some social media. We can add that those links into the blog article. So if yeah, anybody sure. wants to follow you, they can follow cool. you there yeah. too. And mm -hmm. um, hey, great talking to you. Yeah, man. Thank you, JJ. It was a pleasure being on the podcast with you. Thank you very much. Take care. All Ciao. the best. Ciao.